Will you offer him your worship? Will you offer him your voices? Will you offer him your talents? Will you offer him your lives? The Bible goes on to say, being warned in a dream not to return to Herod. Here's the Lord intervening again. This is where God himself is truly Emmanuel to these wise men. God with them. And they departed to their own country by another way. It's just like the Lord to guide his people and be with his people. He guided Joseph in a dream so that these wise men were warned by a dream that Herod was up to no good and will find himself entrenched in murder we can learn something about devotion. We can learn something about dedication from these wise men. We also learn something about obedience from them as well. We find something in the gifts that they gave. Something that speaks of devotion. Something they were willing to give as a sacrifice, even of praise and worship to our Lord. Travel so far, filled and found, ten more at mountain, following on the star. Oh, star of one, the star of night, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Star of one, the star of night, star of royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. These wise men offered something to Jesus that was of extreme value to them. Follow along in the rest of this narrative as we close out the birth narrative and this protection that the Lord offered Mary and Joseph and those involved. I want you to note how many times this phrase in a dream or in a vision reoccurs uh, as we finish out the rest of this chapter. The Bible says in verse 13, and now when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. That sounds very familiar, doesn't it? He appeared to Joseph in a, in a dream one time before. To, to reveal to him that his name shall be Jesus and that Mary's child that is was within her shall be from the Holy Spirit. But then Joseph being revealed in a dream, they said to him, rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and you remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for this child and to destroy him. And then he arose and he took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. And then they remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. And then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked, anger duped, if you will, by the wise men, he became furious. And he sent and he killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Here's Herod had been revealed. He wasn't wanting to worship the Lord. He was wanting to destroy. This was fulfilled by the prophet Jeremiah saying a voice was heard in, in Ramah weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. Awful King Herod. When Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph yet again. Don't tell me that God isn't intervening in history. Don't tell me that God isn't protecting his people. Don't tell me that God isn't Emmanuel to his people. The reason we are sitting here today can be attributed to the Lord intervening in history. Saying, rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought this child's life are now dead. And he arose and he took the child and his mother and they went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that, that Archelaus was reigning over Judah in place of his father Herod. He was, uh, of his father Herod. Well, Joseph, he was frightened. He was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and he lived in a city called Nazareth. So that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. And we find in Isaiah 11, 1, 
this prophecy, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, a branch from his roots shall bear, shall bear fruit. The Lord intervening in a mighty, in a mighty, mighty way, being Emmanuel, protecting. Today we reflect on many details surrounding the birth of our Lord. And we like to sometimes insert ourselves within this major scene. We like to insert ourselves in this surreal scene, this nice pristine winter night. This, this scene where the wise men come, the shepherds come, the sky is clear and it's, it might be a little cool or crisp outside and we like to insert ourselves into this manger scene but the birth of our, of our Lord has a lot of details that can be disturbing had the Lord not intervened. We like to insert ourselves at the manger side of, of Jesus but we find through this whole tale, this whole this whole narrative that the enemy was doing all that he can to disrupt God's plan. But on that holy night in Bethlehem, God stepped into this world. He did so for you and I. God stepped into this world in the form of a baby. Not only was he wrapped in swaddling clothes, but he was also wrapped in, in humility, wrapped in flesh. God became flesh. Not only did he step into that manger on that holy night, but he continued to step towards Calvary every single day of his life. Aren't you glad that he died for you? Aren't you glad he came into the world not just to be a baby, but to grow up as a sinless, a sinless man to be your sacrifice for you? So this season, let us reflect on what occurred on that holy night there, not only in Bethlehem, but the whole story surrounding the providence of God, the sovereignty of God. That God loved you so much that he stepped into human history on that holy night. Oh, holy night stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and the soul felt its worth a thrill of the weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel voice Says, oh, now was born Oh light divine Oh the light Oh night divine Truly He told us to love one another His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Sing hymns of joy, grateful chorus raise. We let all within us. Praise His holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise His name forever. His power and glory. Oh, and the more.
proclaim His power and glory Oh, and the more proclaim Oh, Lord, your knees Oh, Christ was born, oh, light, divine, oh, the night, oh, night, know today that is going to be our altar call that is going to be our way of invitation that is going to be our way of response to the Word of God if we can think about ourselves in this narrative we can think of ourselves as King Herod many times our flesh and our fallen nature comes out more than what we would like to admit to we might like to think of ourselves as wise men seeking the guidance and the counsel of our Lord but always fallen short as it seems. We might like to think of ourselves as Mary or, or Joseph and we have ministries that we are protective of. Ministries that we want folks to be involved in and so we offer them up. We might be like Mary or Joseph and we see the protecting hand of the Lord in our lives being true Emmanuel to us so this is going to be our time of response and our time of of contemplation on the word that we heard this morning so what I'm going to do is I want to ask you if you will if you'll stand with me in this moment of invitation and contemplation I'm not going to ask Sandra to come to the piano or Danny to the organ this is going to be our, our this is going to be our invitation and this is going to be our benediction as well. So I'm going to pray and as I do so, if the Lord has spoken to you through his word today and you have a heavy burden that you want to lay on this altar, as I pray, I will ask if you will come and lay that at the feet of Jesus as well. There might be something in the sermon today that struck a chord with you and your devotion or your dedication to our Lord Jesus. And as I pray that prayer, would you come to the altar today and make that thing right? Maybe you're here today and maybe you do not know the Lord in the sense of salvation that he has never forgiven you of your sin. You never called on him as your Lord. And you want to do that today by the leadership of the Holy Spirit, drawing him into yourself. Would you come as I pray to the altar? Let me pray for us, and as I say, let that be our invitation. You come to the altar as the Lord leads you to do so, and we will dismiss after this prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this sobering time in your house. We thank you, God, for sending your son. God, we, can, we could talk about Christmas all, all day long, and we could talk about what happened and be refreshed with the story and know the narrative, Father. But there's so many things, God, that we need to be reminded of as far as our devotion to you and who really genuinely needs those gifts uh, we offer our gift of of worship we offer our gift of devotion and service to you and many times we fall short of that and so I ask you to lead us lead me God to give more unto you and to serve you more with a uh, with a giving heart father I I thank you God that so many years ago you you spoke your word and men of old wrote it down for us to take uh, in 2017 and decipher and to and to implant it in our lives and to learn God so I ask you today, Father, for those who are here and have fell under conviction of your word as they have been illumined by the Holy Spirit, we ask you today that they would respond to that. Father, respond to that in obedience. We thank you so much for the day that we celebrate because we know that the babe will not remain in a manger. We know that the Son of God will not stay in that carved out piece of stone in that stable where livestock is all surrounding as an example of humility. 
but will grow up one day and live a life of total perfection. Will die on the cross for our pla- in our place and then will rise again on the third day and will make intercessions for his people. And truly will be Emmanuel throughout all of the ages. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. We worship you for that. God, I ask a blessing upon these families today as they meet with their families and they celebrate the birth of our Lord in their life. God, may they intently worship you as they meet with their families, as they love on their families. May they be reminded, Father, of this year. We love you. We thank you. We praise you so much. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. And you guys are dismissed. Have a merry, merry Christmas.